Okay guys, I got a solar project today. Nothing big, nothing fancy. Um, I need to solve a problem with my camper. Uh, for those of you who haven't watched my channel, aren't subscribers, I live in this trailer in the woods, completely off the grid. And um, I put in this solar panel system that I'll show you here in a second to be my main source of power and it does very, very well. However, the house battery that I currently still have connected to the, the trailer, because I guess basically I don't want to replace the converter charger in this trailer because I don't know how long I'm gonna own this trailer. I don't wanna be investing money in it and making permanent modifications to it if I don't have to. So this system is completely separate from the trailer. It's almost 1200 watts of solar panels and a six kilowatt battery and all the electronics are in here. And then I feed into the trailer. Um, I added a 30 amp output right here that I can connect to the trailer to power uh, bigger stuff, but I typically do not run the air conditioner and the big stuff that I only use that temporarily as needed. So having said all of that, um, I am here three or four days a week and then I leave to go for the custody time with my kids. Um, and so I leave the trailer unattended and somehow I leave and, it, and there's zero amp draw on the house battery here uh, that I'll show you in a second, but somehow it drained over the long weekend. So uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to set up a 100 watt solar panel to feed into that specifically just the house battery while I'm away. I'm not going to integrate it into the, the trailer. It's going to be fully self-contained and external to the trailer. Um, also, if you're new to my channel and haven't watched my content before, you're not going to see high dollar stuff. You're not going to see uh, perfect, uh, you know, perfect cable management and and uh and very sexy installs this is this is quick and dirty but sound engineering and very functional very um efficient all, all that kind of the only real high dollar item that i've got it for the system and this was sent to me for free uh, by sun fun kits a few years ago before i switched my channel to completely agenda free so uh, yes, I did do a paid uh, video on this in the past, uh, but I have not been using it uh, for production systems till this point. And it's a it's a monster battery. It's it's grade A, true grade A, and it is a shame to just keep it sitting on a shelf. So I'm going to start using it. But I just did want to disclose that that this was uh, sent to me for free. Uh, but I am not trying to drive affiliate sales. I'm not trying to do any of that kind of stuff anymore. I'm just trying to make use of something that I have sitting around. One of the other components is going to be this Genesun charge controller, which will be perfect for a 100 watt solar panel. So I'm going to grab a 100 watt panel that I have laying around and we're going to use this tub uh, to try to keep things waterproof. Again, you could buy a much better enclosure for this, but number one, this is going to be temporary. Uh, I probably will not be using this for more than a year, so I'd really prefer not to invest precious funds in it. And number two, it, it does get the job done. Um, there's nothing wrong with this. So this is going to, I'm gonna put the battery and the charge controller in, run some cables in um, through a, a hole in the side and connect it to the, the RV. Currently, this was the old lead acid piece of crap that died. Uh, currently, I have this Miller Tech, which is great. Um, there's nothing wrong with the Miller Tech. It was doing just fine. But anyways, this battery is just much bigger, has much higher capacity. So hopefully it will help my problem of not draining over the weekend, but also having a 100 watt solar panel connected to just this for this purpose to keep this battery topped off will also help. Now before you watch this and comment, this is not a how-to video. I'm not going to show you every little tiny step. I have hundreds of videos on my channel that are like that. 
I've been there, done that. The content is already there. So if you're interested in this subject and what I'm doing, please take a minute to check through my channel, look for those videos, watch those first. And if you still have uh, questions or comments, by all means, I love uh, responding to comments and answering questions. You're welcome to email me, leave a comment on the video, whatever you want to do. But please don't expect this, don't get upset with this and thumbs down this video because it's not a how-to showing you every tiny little step. Think of this as more of like an intermediate video where we're kind of applying some principles. It's still a basic use case, but it's, it's more uh, application. So this is a 200 level college class after you've already completed the 100 uh, where you learn the theory and learn the basics. Okay, I got the battery in here and I cut some, some little holes with a uh, plastic drill bit. Uh, they're up and under this, this lip here, this handle. So there's no way that water's gonna get in there. So I feel pretty comfortable with that. Um, yeah, some bugs and stuff might get in there, but no big deal. It's not going to uh, take on water once I put the lid on it and put you know, a wood block or something on top so that the lid won't come off. So um, you've got the, the negative terminal here I can connect when I'm done, but uh, I'm just gonna lay the uh, the charge controller down there on the bottom and then get get stuff wired up um, I got another hole here for the uh, the inputs from the uh, the solar panel to, to enter the box and then everything else should just be self-contained inside the box okay so we've got the charge controller down there uh, we've got cables connected to the battery terminals and I've got the positive up here and attached and the negative is over here getting ready to be attached later along with the negative from the trailer. But we're gonna attach that last, obviously. Um, we also, the last piece now is we're gonna thread some, some cables through that that will go to the charge controller and then out to a solar panel. Uh, I grabbed these cables just because I already had them made. Uh, the gauge is way overkill. You don't need them to be this, this thick, but uh, they're already made, they're already uh, I don't have to crimp on some new MC4 connectors onto some more wire. So we're going to go ahead and reuse that. And uh, on the homestead, that's kind of the name of the game is, is reuse, recycle, repurpose. Okay, I propped that thing up on some blocks of wood to make it a little easier to work on. Uh, but we did complete the, the connections to the battery. As you can see, the light there on the charge controller is blinking. So it is just on standby waiting for... Um, me to hook up the charge or the uh the solar panel to the charge controller so we'll go ahead and grab that i think i'm just going to this is south so for now i think i'm just going to prop up a 100 watt panel right there facing that direction and call that good i'll figure out a way to make sure that the wind doesn't blow it over but uh again this is temporary i will make improvements to this as we go but uh, i want to get this done there's going to be a storm tonight i do want to get this done today and I don't have a lot of time to over engineer this. So this portion is complete though, and I can go ahead and put on the lid and button that all up. The SFK battery um, does have Bluetooth. The charge controller does not. That's just like an $85 uh, charge controller. Uh, it is lithium compatible. It's one of the first lithium compatible charge controllers on the market. I did a review on it uh, many years ago, but, um, but I will be able to monitor this from inside the trailer um, with a Bluetooth app. Okay, that's connected. I will clean that. Um, I'm going to probably end up putting it closer to over there so that the trailer doesn't block it in the afternoon. But as you can see, there is charging activity from the charge controller. So let's check the app and see what the battery looks like. Okay, so here you can see the app on my phone. Now, this app is really good, but it's not the fastest app in the world. It does take a little bit of time to get connected to the battery. So bear with me here. I'm gonna speed this up because seriously, it's very slow. I'm, that's really my only complaint that I've ever had with this app. Anyways, this isn't a video to show off the Bluetooth app. It's just, I wanted to connect to see if there was any activity on the battery to make sure that it was properly connected. Unfortunately, the battery was already fully charged, so there wasn't any input current coming in from the charge controller. 
So we'll do it the other way and we'll go into the trailer and turn on some loads that will use the house battery. So as you saw, there was no charging activity. It said zero amp, so I'm just gonna check that real quick. Yeah. This isn't gonna be a huge load, but we'll put on some lights here. And now you can see we have negative amps so that means that power is going out of the battery so that looks good and we can verify that everything's connected properly okay well again it isn't pretty i'm gonna put the lid on this and kind of clean up my work here put some blocks of wood on top of that so it doesn't fly away find a little bit more secure home for that but this is uh, kind of the first rough draft solution to this problem uh, i'm hoping between the much much you know triple the size of this battery this has 300 amp hours. This only had 100 amp hour. Um, between that and adding a 100 watt solar panel to kind of get to offset the losses, um, I'm hoping that this will be a permanent solution. And if it is, then we can, you know, make some investments in making this a little more tidied up and pretty looking and and a permanent fix. But um, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to go out and buy a whole bunch of components and and uh, get everything perfect only to find out that you made an error or that it's not actually going to fix your problem that there was a different problem so this is just kind of how i operate and uh, i think it's the appropriate way to operate on homestead is do some testing make sure something's going to be the solution before you uh you know use your precious funds for it so anyway enough preaching enough talking that's going to wrap it up for this video. Like I said, if you didn't understand some of the things that I did or, or I skipped some steps you wanted to see, go back and watch some of the other videos on my channel for um, kind of how-to and beginner videos on solar. Thanks for watching, guys. One final thought before we wrap this up, and this kind of goes back to the uh, application of theory thing. We're not trying to charge up this monster battery with this little 100 watt panel what we're trying to do let's say for example we have some sort of a you know a half of an amp draw on the battery um, if that's constantly draining the battery at half of an amp so about six watts uh, around the clock that's 24 hours so that's 130 approximately watt hours per per day well if this thing only produces power, again, this isn't in the greatest place. There's a, tr there's a tree right here. There's all kinds of obstacles. But if th all this thing has to do is produce, you know, 130, 150 watt hours per day, and it offsets the loss that we have on the battery. So again, we're not trying to create a fully self-contained optimal system. We're not trying to mount the panel at exactly the right angle and give it unobscured access to the sun and and size it properly for this battery and so forth you you do want to do that if you're investing money and creating a permanent solution however as i mentioned before this is just testing a solution for a problem so i'm using all components i already had i didn't spend a dollar on this system and we're going to prove the concept and make sure that it works for the next you know six months or something over the winter so I just want to prove the concept, make sure it's going to be their long-term fix, that it's bulletproof, that it survives during storms and while I'm gone for a week on vacation and any other things like that before I want to invest hard-earned money into a permanent solution. So just wanted to explain that so that nobody was commenting, oh, that's never going to work, it's too small or it's it's at the wrong angle or it's shaded by the sun or any of those things. Yes, I know that, but it's irrelevant because all we're trying to do is overcome some sort of parasitic draw on the battery. Okay, enough listening to me yak. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you found it interesting and I'll do an update video on this in the spring and show you whether it worked or not.